This video is a short video in a series of videos covering the aerodynamic terminology used in the design videos for the UWS-1 ultralight airplane design. In particular, this video is going to cover aspect ratio. The symbol for aspect ratio is either A or AR. You'll see it both ways in the literature. The aspect ratio is the span of a flying surface over the cord of the flying surface. And it doesn't have to be a wing. Uh, it can also be rudders, vertical stabilizers, horizontal stabilizers. Just about any flying surface on the airplane will have an aspect ratio. And that aspect ratio is going to be used in the design of the surface. So as you can see, this ratio, the span, which is the letter B over the cord, which can be an uppercase or lowercase letter C, is the aspect ratio. The cord is going to typically be something called the mean aerodynamic cord. We'll cover that in another video. But for a tapered wing, the cord is going to be halfway along the semi-span. So looking at this equation here, a high aspect ratio is going to be a long, narrow wing. So the span B is going to be large, the cord C is going to be small. And that's what we're seeing over here in this picture. This is not an extremely high aspect ratio wing, but it's a higher aspect ratio than you'll see on typical light aircraft. So conversely, a low aspect ratio is going to be a short, deep wing. You'll have a smaller B and a larger C. So in that case, a low aspect ratio would be roughly half this wing. So about this 50% area, that would be a low aspect ratio wing. Not extremely low, but fairly low. Another thing to think about is the effective aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is the physical dimensions, but there's also an effective aspect ratio. What does the airplane feel like its aspect ratio is? If we have a rounded tip, the aspect ratio will be the same as we're showing here, but the effective aspect ratio will actually be a little bit shorter. Let's talk just a little bit about how air flows around the tip of an airplane wing. As the wing is moving through the air, there will be air going under the wing and air going over the wing. The air moving over the top of the wing will generally be moving faster than the air under the wing. This will create a lower dynamic pressure on top than on the bottom. Out at the tip of the wing, this higher pressure air underneath will want to come around the tip to the lower pressure side on top of the wing. As the wing is moving through the air then, this is going to be creating a vortex of swirling air trailing behind the wing. The position of this vortex helps determine the effective aspect ratio of the wing. If this vortex is farther inside, we'll have a lower aspect ratio than if it's right at the tip. The plan form of the wing and the shape of the tip will determine where this vortex occurs. Over on the right side of this diagram, you see a Hershey bar or rectangular wing. The effective aspect ratio of this wing will be used to compare against these other plan forms. This column on the right will show how the effective span changes with differing plan forms. This column is a difference in span relative to the cord length. So zero is no difference since we're comparing the wing against itself. This is a simple wing with just a little extension on it. On this wing, we can see that the difference is 10%. So that's not too bad a loss. On this plan form, the difference is 18%. So we've lost quite a bit with this shape. This is a very round shape. And in this case, you lost 16%. This is just a slightly modified version of this one up here. And you can see that it's lost 13%. So having rounded wingtips is not as good as having squared off wingtips. The reason for that is because you're going to have be losses from high pressure under the wing coming around this rounded surface to the top side. You lose effective aspect ratio. Well, what do we do with the aspect ratio? 
changes in aspect ratio will change the slope of the coefficient lift versus angle of attack curve. So using this aspect ratio, we can get a better idea of where that maximum stall is going to occur versus alpha because as you change aspect ratio it will actually move the angle at which that maximum coefficient of lift will occur so we can use our aspect ratio to get a better idea of that angle aspect ratio is also used to estimate the coefficient of drag the higher the aspect ratio the less induced drag will have the wing. We'll talk about induced drag in another video. Aspect ratio of a wing changes how thick the wing will be. If you have a short stubby wing, it's going to have a thick airfoil. If you have a long narrow wing, it's going to have a thin airfoil. Let's say that the center of lift, if you were to concentrate all the lift in one spot on the wing, where would that be? Generally, you can say that's going to be around 40%. It, it varies depending on the plan form of the wing, but that distance will move out. So 40% of a low aspect ratio could be, let's say, 8 feet, but on a high aspect ratio, that could be 10 feet. If you're moving that center of lift farther out, you're putting more bending at the root of the wing. So we can use the aspect ratio to start determining characteristics our wing spar will have to have. We'll get into that more detail in the design videos. This video is just one in a series of videos on a YouTube playlist. and I'll put the link to that playlist down in the description for this video.